Okay, hello everyone and welcome back to your YouTube channel. And welcome to this very interesting uh, new video for you. And as you must be aware, I am recording this series of videos related to electromechanical conversion systems. And one very important aspect when we are talking about electromechanical conversion system is the way that the magnetic electric interactions create mechanical forces. Because those mechanical forces are related with the main behavior, the main features of the rotational machines. So when we are talking about generators or we are talking about motors, we need to, we need to think about how these torque forces and voltages are induced. So the example today is a very simple example, it's a numerical example, and the objective of this video is to show you the way that current, magnetic field, uh, create forces in a conductor. So over here, I have this very basic st statement, and let's consider a conductor. Let's say that the length is 0 0.25 meters and carries a current, in this case, is 10 amps. It's good, to, it's good to indicate that this is direct current, or DC, because that means that the current magnitude is constant in amps, but also the current direction is well defined and is the same direction all the time. But this conductor that is carrying current is located at a place where is a right angle, 90 degree, to a magnetic field density. In other words, what I am telling you is that the, the plane between the conductor and the magnetic field density is a right angle, 90 degree. And there are three questions over here for you. Question A, determine the magnitude of the electromagnetic force F in Newtons is subject to if the field magnetic flux density is 0 0.5 Tesla. Second question, determine the magnitude of the magnetic flux density V, in this case in Tesla again, required to produce a force of two, um, uh, two newtons. So as you can see, in one is the magnetic flux density known, and on the second one, we want to obtain the magnetic flux density is unknown, and we want that fulfill a very specific force. And the third question is quite interesting because we want to determine the direct current I in amps that is required to return the force on the conductor to the original force. That means the force calculated in question A, but using the magnetic flux density calculated in B. If you want to attend this question by yourself, you can see over here the numerical solution. For question A, the electromechanical force is 1.25 newtons. For question B, the magnetic flux density is 0.8 teslas. And for question C is 6.25 amps. So that is basically, that is basically the answer for the question. But let's start. It's very important for my students that they remind and they remember all the theory behind the phenomenon that we are studying, okay? Because the idea is that we have a clear understanding, we have a clear understanding about the physics in order to use the equations in a proper way. So here, I will start talking about Imagine that this is the conductor that we are talking about. There is a current over there, and we are using this red arrow to show you the current. And the current is going to the left, to the right, and that is a DC current. That means the magnitude will be 10, and in this case, the direction always will go to the right. 
Also, we have a constant magnetic flux density. You can see those arrows in blue color representing the flux lines. And as you can see over there, it's going from the top to the bottom. What is interesting is that when we have current, we have magnetic flux density. The consequence of those interactions are basically here force. That means that this conductor will be affected by a induced force, in this case, F. You must remember for the class of theory, remember that I spend a lot of time talking to you about the theory, and this is the beautiful equation that is the amazing equation that we use to calculate the force. In this case, you can see that we are using both letters for F, L, and B, because those are vectors. This equation is telling you that the vector force is equal to the intensity, current intensity, multiplied by L as a vector. And in this case, the vector is the direction of the current and the magnitude is the total length of the conductor in meters. And you can see this beautiful cross over the air because we are talking about we are talking about a cross product between two vectors and B represent the vector defining the magnetic flux density. To be honest, this is the equation that you must remember if you took any class related with um, electromagnetic theory. This is a vector equation. I love that equation because if you use that equation properly, you can obtain directly the magnitude and the direction of the force. However, in many books, and some of my students, they don't want to use vectors. Vectors are very, very nice if you have a full mathematic mind, or if you have the capability of abstraction in order to create those representations in your brain. However, in many cases, the students prefer to go for the, I will say, the faster or the easier road. So the easier road is forget using vectors and transform everything into uh, scalar quantities or magnitudes. So what I'm telling you, so what I'm telling you is that basically we can do the following we can convert these vectors into magnitudes. You can see those bars here surrounding the letter F because that represents the magnitude of the force. And the magnitude of the force will be numerically equal to the current, the current intensity multiplying by the magnitude of L, and that is the length of the conductor, and the magnitude of the magnetic flux density. However, when we are using when we are using this um, uh, a scalar or magnitude equation, now we need to care about the sign of theta. Theta, this beautiful Greek letter, is basically defining the angle, defining the angle between the vector L and the vector B. So for for the very early statement that we have been working over there. What you need to understand is the angle between the conductor where the current is moving and the vector related to the magnetic flux density that will affect this angle over here. So in many books, you will find that people are using italic letters and that represent scalar quantities or just magnitudes. So in some books, you will find this equation like I am presenting here. You can see that in this case, it's, it's based on in, uh, magnitudes. So you will find that equation in many of the books. However, what is interesting to show you over here is that for this very specific problem that we are working today, you must remember that this is the conductor. You must remember that the current is moving in this direction. This is the current and the magnetic flux was going in this direction. And basically what I am telling you is 
that the angle between the current and the magnetic flux density is basically 90 degree. So when we have this condition 90 degree, the sine of theta disappears from the equation. So the equation that you will find in many books is basically is basically f equal i multiplied by l multiplied by b. However, I highly suggest, I highly suggest to my students to be very careful with this equation because this equation is only valid if the sine of theta is mm, 1 or in this case theta equal 90 degrees. What I am telling you, my dear students, is this equation number 2 that I am showing over there you must be careful, you must be careful because that equation is only valid if the location of the conductor that is carrying the current and the magnetic flux density is, is 90 degrees, so the sign is 1, okay? Be careful with that equation. So the second problem of using this equation is related with defining the direction, defining the direction of the interaction, in this case, the force. So for that, our very good friend um, Flemings, he created what we call the left hand, the left hand uh, rule. And the left hand rule is a very simple and very important rule because that rule will allow you, this rule will allow you to define the magnetic interaction, in this case, the force direction. And let me show you over here, okay? Let me show you over here. There are several mnemonics that you can find. There are several mnemonics that you can find to define the magnetic, electric, and um, mechanical interaction between force, magnetic flux density, and um, also current. So in this case, you can find several, but you can see over here that we use the letters F, B, I, okay? Be careful, this is not the law enforcement agency in the US, the Federal Bureau of Investigation, no. We are talking about FBI here because we are talking about force, we are talking about magnetic flux density, and also we are talking about the uh, current. So here in this, in this figure number one, you can see on the left hand side, we have a left hand, and in that left hand, we are using basically three fingers. The thumb, the thumb, is representing the direction of the force. The mm, index finger is showing the direction for the magnetic field density. And finally, the middle finger, in this case, some countries they call the birdie, the birdie is defining the current direction, okay? But some of my students, they prefer thinking about vectors and the space representation. So here on the right hand side, you can see that I am using a vector representation, 3D vector representation. And in this case, the 3D representation, you can see here the X axis, the Y axis and the Z axis. And you can see also in, in vectors, you can see the unity vector on the X axis, unity, unity vector on the Y axis, and also the unity vector on the Z axis. What I am telling you is if we put on the X axis, the magnetic flux density, and the current is going on the positive Y axis, so the interaction between the magnetic flux density on the positive x axis and the current on the positive x axis will create a force that it will go in the uh, in the z axis 90 degree between the plane and that will be the basic direction positive z axis for the force 
So again, if you are using the mm, magnitudes, so you need to use the right hand rule, uh, sorry, the left hand rule coming from my friend uh, Flemings in order to define the direction. So coming back to the numerical solution of this example, uh, I believe you can see over here that we know that the magnetic flux density is 0.5 Teslas. And in this case, again, we are assuming that the current is provided is 10 amps. And very important over here, yes, the angle is 90 degrees. So the sign of the angle is basically one. So we can use this equation that we have used before. And in this case, the solution is basically a numerical substitution. You can see over here, 0.5 Tesla, 0.25 meters and 10 amps. Those are the data given in the statement. And finally, we got the answer for question A and that is 1.25 Newton. It's a very simple and straightforward um, numerical substitution on this equation over here. The second question I would say is probably more interesting because in this question, we are dealing with a problem in another direction. And the question is very simple. Now we know the force. In this case, we want to have a force of two newtons using a current that is 10 amps. So the question is, how much is the magnetic flux density? So what we need to do is basically go to the original equation, force equal magnetic flux density, length and current. And from there, what we want to do is to extract the magnetic flux density. So basically what we are doing is that the magnetic flux density will be the force divided by the length and the current. So we obtain this equation over here that is basically the way to calculate here the magnetic flux density. Now again, the problem is just a numerical substitution. In this case, you can see here in the numerator, we are using the force to newtons. And in the denominator, we have the length 0.25 meter and the current that was given 10 amps. So after that, you put the numbers in your calculator, or if you prefer to use MATLAB or any other mathematical tool, you can do it. And finally, we obtain here the solution. The magnetic flux density will go for 0.8 Tesla. Perfect. Finally is the very interesting question. Because the very interesting question, question C, basically we have been asked about the current that is producing a force of 1.25 newtons. But in this case, we want to keep the magnetic flux density equal to the previous question, 0 0.8 Teslas. So again, is coming back to this equation, F equal B L I. And what you need to do is extract the current. In this case, the current uh, you can easily do. The current will be basically the force divided by the magnitude of the magnetic flux density and the length. So in this equation, what we need to do now is the numerical substitution. We know the magnet, uh, the magnet, and the mechanical force 1.25 newtons, and also we know here the magnetic flux density 0.8 teslas, and we know the length 0.25 meters. So after you put that in your calculator or any mathematical software that you want to use. So basically we got the answer and in this case is 6.25 amps. So this is a very basic exercise. To be honest, it's very simple. And what we have done here in this numerical example is to show you the mechanism to calculate the force 
that is um, established when we have a conductor transporting some currents and there is a magnetic flux density. If you love to use vectors, of course, you can use this equation, the equation number one show over there. And in this case, this beautiful equation over here is using both letters because those are vectors. You can see over here, this is the force vector. This is the vector defining the magnetic flux density. And this is the vector defining the length. However, in some books and some of my students, they prefer to use a simplified version of that equation. They don't like to use vectors, so they will find this equation in many, many books. However, when you are using this equation, you must be careful with this angle because theta represents the angle between current and the magnetic flux density. But the other thing when you are using just magnitude for your numerical calculation is the problem related with defining the direction. So to solve the problem of direction, our colleague Flemings create this very interesting Fleming uh, left-hand rule. So you can use this FBI to remember the interaction between force, magnetic flux density, and current. So I believe this example is very useful for my students. I hope you understand and you find useful this very detailed explanation. And if it is so, please subscribe to the YouTube channel or leave a like. So another thing, if you have any question or any comment, please feel free to drop an email or a comment here. Um, this is all for this video. I hope you enjoy and I will see you at the next one. Bye now.